David Williams with Jesus Ministries here. Uh, faithful flock to see statue of Santo Torribio, the immigrant's saint. People say he's their guardian, their lawyer, their smuggler. On a recent afternoon, they lined up at his feet with their requests. What were those requests? Please, my mother needs a visa. Please, my niece was caught by agents. Please, I can't go on being illegal. As a border crisis involving the influx of ten, tens, thousands, I'm sorry, that's a typo by the editor of this, tens of thousands of children from Central America unfolds, the faithful of Southern California are flocking to Santo Torrevio Romo Gonzalez, the Catholic saint who they believe watches over immigrants. He flew in for his visit to Los Angeles last weekend. He came from a tiny town in the Mexican state of Jalisco in the form of a fragile wooden statue. He came in the form of a fragile wooden statue that will tour churches across three counties. It cost a price of two first class tickets to get him here, but we did it, said Rosa Gonzalez of Chatsworth, who handled the saints' transportation. Now here he is bringing blessings to everyone. Romo Gonzalez was a simple priest killed during a religious uprising in 1928. He was canonized just 14 years ago, meaning he was made a saint, made someone who the Catholics can pray to. Uh, 14 years ago, but Latinos, particularly Mexicans, have made him legendary. They say the saint, often wearing a cowboy hat and boots, miraculously appears to the border crossers when they are most desperate in the desert, along roadsides, and in migrant shelters. Santo Torrevio gives them food, money, and water. And like a coyote or a smuggler, he helps them cross into the United States. Sometimes, when the path is too perilous, he tells them to turn around and return home. I owe him everything, said Jose Ochoa, who showed up to welcome the saint to his church, Santiago de Compostela in Lake Forest. I, could, I couldn't imagine dying. I could not imagine dying without coming to see him to say Thank you. So, as we're talking about worshiping the devil here, uh, we've got this Roman Catholic practice of honoring dead people who they believe are worthy of veneration or of worship. Uh, they carry him around, and when I say him, I shouldn't be saying him, because the word of God says it is appointed unto man once to die after this judgment. So when we die, we're going to either heaven or hell immediately. And then at the day of judgment, we stand before God and we're either going to spend eternity on a renewed earth or in the lake of fire. So wherever this individual is, and if he died doing the things that these people are doing to him, he's in hell. He's not in heaven because you can't bow to a statue and go to heaven. Now, when we talk about the Catholic practice of statues, we look back at Exodus 20 that describes the mind of God concerning statues. We know it's the old covenant law, but the mind of God is still revealed in the old covenant, under the old covenant. Now, we need to understand it from the new covenant perspective, but we can still gather the truth of God from the old covenant, various prophecies, various statutes and standards. We've just got to understand them from Jesus' perspective. So, there, it was never okay in the Old Covenant or under the New to bow to a statue, an inanimate object that was to embody a saint, a believer, a person who serves the Most High God. So we've got people who are gathering to pay homage to an individual they say appears to them when they're uh, about to cross the border. And basically what we're dealing with, we're dealing with the problem of why their country is the way that it is. Why is Mexico messed up to the degree that people feel like they have to leave? It's the same reason why America is getting messed up. It's because of idolatry. So 
if you worship devils, then those devils will torment you and they'll destroy your country. That destruction will manifest as poverty. That destruction will manifest as violence. That destruction will manifest in terms of economic collapse. It'll manifest in terms of natural disasters and, and, and droughts and famines. The Lord promises to do that to those who worship idols. And so you've got these people who are from another nation and they want to enter the United States of America, but yet they worship statues and it doesn't matter. Them coming over here is, uh, and, and finding peace is only temporary because the wrath of God is going to be poured out on the United States of America because America also worships devils. And how do you know we worship devils? Because of our behavior. Okay, the way you know that you worship a devil is if you do the things the devil wants you to do. The way you know you serve the Lord Jesus Christ is if you do the things that Jesus Christ wants you to do. It's not difficult to know what Jesus Christ wants you to do. You can open the Bible and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you can see what Jesus Christ wants you to do. You can see what Jesus Christ did. Jesus said that he did the works of his Father. He told the religious leaders in John 8 that he, do he does the works of his Father and men don't like him for it and men don't like him for it and then you've got people who do the works of the devil and jesus said that your father is the devil because you do his works he's your master he's your father because you behave like him i, I my master and my father is is the father god because i behave like him and i do what he tells me to do and so when you and i do the devil's work then we get devil results and we might not want those results and so we might want to come to the United States of America where Catholic Catholicism was once illegal where Christmas and and Halloween and, and those things were illegal here because they were Roman Catholic and it was known that Roman Catholicism was a murderous operation uh, that was masquerading as a religion and so I'm not saying that every Catholic person is a murderer I'm, I'm obviously not saying that but I am saying that the Roman Catholic religion is a murderous religion and the Pope obviously Pope Francis he's not telling these Roman Catholics that they can't bow to statues because he himself does that and so brothers and sisters the Spirit of the Lord is going to pour out his wrath on those who bow to statues and when the United States allows immigrants to enter and they give them freedom of religion well freedom of religion that vague reference in the Constitution has allowed there to be freedom to worship Satan. And that's what brings about the problems that we're having. And so whether you worship this saint or whether you worship money, the Lord wants you to lay that down and he wants you to give your heart and your mind to him. He wants you to surrender your life to him. He does not want you to trust in a an, an individual a dead individual to be free or to receive peace he wants you to trust in the living God in Exodus chapter 20 verse uh, the, the second commandment in the old, under the old covenant which Jesus did not discard that 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 standard in respect to idolatry he, he said very clear it says very clearly in Exodus 20 he says, you shall not make unto you a graven image and bow to it. And he says, it, he says, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. I visit the iniquity or I bring punishment of the fathers. I, I, visit, I, I visit the sins. I will judge the sins. I'll punish the sins of the fathers on the children unto the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but I show mercy unto thousands of those who love me and who keep my commandments and so the Lord wants us to repent of idolatry and to give our hearts to serving the true and the living God and if you and I will do this then our nations will be blessed if you and I will lay down idolatry and give our hearts to Jesus Christ and live a life that is pleasing to the Father, then the Lord will bless you. He will bless you. And this does require you totally surrendering your heart to Him. That's what He requires. He wants you to totally surrender your heart to Him. So ask Jesus Christ to help you, and He most certainly will. The Word of God says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. 
if you're ever in the West Palm Beach area, feel free to drop by and pay us a visit. Uh, we're, we're here for fellowship. We're at 1750 Osceola Drive in West Palm Beach, Florida. That's 1750 Osceola Drive, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33409. If you'd like to donate into Jesus Ministries, it would be a blessing. We're at P.O. Box 17143. West Palm Beach, Florida, 33415. You can send that offering to one to P.O. Box 17143, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33415. Jesus is coming back. It is our responsibility as sons of God to prepare you for that great and terrible day. For some, it's going to be great, and for others, it's going to be terrible.